So it is observing our states of being, and it's always endorsing who we are. So if you're really happy being unhappy, Hmm. and you are a victim to your life, it honors free will, and it will endorse the very chemicals and actually the very reality you experience. Well, I think that thoughts are the language of the brain, and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. So if you're thinking insecure thoughts, you're going to turn on a set of circuits in your brain that produces a level of mind, and another part of the brain is going to make a chemical for you to begin to feel insecure. The moment you feel insecure, your brain is monitoring its internal state. You are going to think more corresponding thoughts equal to how you feel which is going to generate more chemicals for to feel insecure and then think more insecure thoughts. And that cycle of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking, creating that state of being, causes the person to say, I am insecure. <clears throat> and whenever you say, I am anything, you are commanding the present moment into a destiny. So then, the antithesis is also true. If you're grateful and you're in loving life, you are going to think corresponding thoughts equal to that emotional state, which is going to make a different factory or blend of chemicals for you to feel more gracious, more kind, more giving, which is going to generate more thoughts, and you're going to create a different state of being. So <clears throat> the trouble I think we have is that the process of thinking and feeling and feeling and thinking over time conditions the body to subconsciously become the mind. Now, once the body becomes the mind, the servant is now the master. And so the program begins to become activated, and now people slip into unconscious states. So in order for us to change then, and this is the problem that I have with affirmations. Mm. When you're having an affirmation, an affirmation is you're affirming your I am, your state of being. Yeah. So if you're saying I am abundant, but you're feeling lack, I am successful, but you're feeling unworthy, that's mind and body in opposition. So then, when a person then knows how to regulate and change their internal states, and they move into a new state of being, when they're in that state of being, the side effect of being in that state of being is, I am wealthy, you're actually affirming what you already are. You will only accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to your emotional state. And you will not accept, believe, and surrender to any thoughts that are not equal to your emotional state. So, as an example, a person goes to a doctor's office. The doctor says, okay, you're diagnosed with MS or lupus or cancer. The moment the person gets the diagnosis, they're either going to feel sadness or fear. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment they start feeling fear, they are going to think corresponding thoughts equal to that emotional state. Oh. So now, those thoughts will slip by their analytical mind, program their autonomic nervous system to make more chemicals equal to that state. So then, if you get a person then to change their emotional state and open their heart, and then begin to feel empowered or invincible or unlimited, uh, uh, then they will begin to accept, believe, and surrender the thoughts equal to that emotional state and they'll program their autonomic nervous system to make a new pharmacy of chemicals to match that state of being. So this is why affirmations don't work mm -hmm. because they never get past the analytical mind. You know, the person will say, I am wealthy, I am love, I am happy, but they haven't addressed the part of them that's not in, uh, in alignment with that. Now the I am that lives within us, that invisible intelligence that's giving life, has a presence, it's an awareness, it's a consciousness. And that consciousness, as an awareness, is paying attention. That's the definition of awareness. So it is observing our states of being. And it's always endorsing who we are. So if you're really happy being unhappy, mm. and you are a victim to your life, it honors free will, and it will endorse the very chemicals, and actually the very reality you experience, equal to that state of being. So when you come out of your resting state, and it requires coming out of your resting state. In other words, this observer is omnipotent, it's omnipresent. It's not, it doesn't move, it's just constant. It's a loving intelligence and it's intelligent love. Our attention is all over the place, you know, mm -hmm. and it's saying, tell me what you want. Just, you know, give me a minute, just line up with me here. 
But when you get present with it and you turn inward, and when your will matches its will, and when your mind matches its mind, and when your love for life matches its love for life, and you're present with it, mm. and now you are turning inward to it, and you're not saying, I want, I need, I hope, I wish. Mm -hmm. That's based in polarity. You're saying, I am. I am unlimited. I am empowered. I am invincible. And when you really feel it, and there's that alignment, and it says, okay, I am going. The I am is going to endorse your I am because you are an extension of my mind. And I'll begin to change the very neurocircuitry, the neurochemistry, the very genetics, and even the expression of your mm. life mm. equal to that. So just like you know, you know when someone's present with you because they're paying attention. Yeah. And ah, this yes. This intelligence yes. requires the same degree of attention. Right? I get it. So placebo is based on three things. Number one is conditioning. You give someone a pill, and it's blue, and blue pills work better than red pills. And uh, it has a certain drug in it, and you take that drug and changes some internal state. It reduces pain, or it takes away a symptom. And then you take it again, and then you take it oh, again, and you take mm -hmm. it again. And sooner or later, you can actually replace that blue pill with just a blue pill with sugar in it. And the person takes it, and by conditioning association, they begin to make the very chemicals based mm -hmm. on the past, so mm -hmm. stimulus response. So we could say then conditioning is based on the past. Now. Expectation is the second element of the placebo, which means expectation then is when you're told something and you begin to expect an outcome, and you're selecting that pill represents a new potential in the quantum field. And a certain percentage of those people will accept, believe, and surrender to the idea and begin to emotionally embrace the outcome. And if you combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion, you're moving into a new state of being. So now, as an example, as you begin to anticipate that occurring, your body's actually living in that future reality in the present moment, and your body begins to make the very chemicals to endorse that state of being. Now, who's doing the chemical, uh, the fabrication of the chemicals? The I am within us, because it's always endorsing who we're being. So if conditioning is based on the past, then expectation is based on the future. The third thing is, is assigning meaning to things. If a doctor says, oh, these... Uh, this pill will actually increase serotonin in the receptors right. and you have the pictures and people right. look at it and, and they start to think about it. When they take the pill, they're assigned meaning to it and it turns out you can give someone a sugar pill and it could be an, it could be, um, you know, told, they could be told there's an antidepressant and 81% of those people mm -hmm. will get better by thought alone. Four out of five people who are taking a pill that has nothing in it Who's told, that are told they're taking an antidepressant, four out of those five people will respond as well as people who are taking antidepressants. And many of those people will actually have functional brain scans to show that their brain is improved. In other words, it's not just in their mind, it's in their brain. And they're making their own antidepressants. So how does that work in terms of the state of being? Well, you combine that clear intention getting clear, although I'm gonna, I could get well from this, you start feeling an elevated emotion like inspiration or joy or gratitude. You just move from living in your past to living in a new future. And when you move into that state of being, that intelligence that's giving you life, the I am, is going to organize your chemistry to reflect who you're being. Mm. Well, if you're taking a placebo, there are a certain percentage of people that will experience the nocebo. <laughs> They'll experience the side effects really? of the very medication they think they're taking because some people are optimists, some people are pessimists, and so uh, uh, a certain percentage of people will experience the side effects of dizziness and nausea. And You know, there are some very strong chemical correlations between withdrawals that are certain uh, 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 medications that have a little bit more of an addictive tendency. The key is that when a person is experiencing, say, uh, anxiety, uh, and they're taking something to reduce their anxiety or they have depression they're taking something to stimulate their depression they're believing that something outside of them is going to change their internal state in many cases it does so then when they're no longer taking it they're also experiencing the withdrawal of the anticipation of taking the very thing that they think that's helping them as well so there's a margin of uh, grayness that isn't so black and white and we know this to be the case because, as an example, 
You can tell a person who uh, is going for their first chemotherapy treatment. You can tell them that chemotherapy is going to make them nauseous and vomit. Mm -hmm. uh, and 40% to 50% of those people on their drive over to their first chemotherapy treatment will experience nausea before the treatment. So I always say, if 50% of those people can get nauseous on their drive to their first chemotherapy treatment, 50% of the people in the world can get well on their drive to work in anticipation of something wonderful happening. It's the same exact phenomenon.